Uh, our reading for this service is taken from the book of Colossians, chapter 2, from verses 9 to 15. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. Having, paid, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in working of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the circumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having counseled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailed it into the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Thank you. Thank you. The situation which I've been in, first of all, it was in Wales when one day I, uh, we were in Wales and I went, uh, we were staying there and I went for a little walk on my own, a, a path I knew, and uh, I climbed up a very steep path and then I knew there was a ridge right along and I came down the other side and went back to my car. Lovely day. And I went to the top of the, the, the hill and I walked along the ridge and suddenly, out of nowhere, came this great big cloud of rain and the mist descended and it rained. It, Melted it down with me, and I could not see a foot in front of me. And I thought, I know my way, but I was absolutely lost. And I thought, I didn't really tell John exactly where I was going. And I wasn't high up in the mountain, it was, I could hear the traffic on the road, but I was absolutely lost. And I sat by a wall thinking that the cloud eventually would go, which it did. But I was absolutely helpless. And I, 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 I was quite confident that I knew what I was doing, but it, it failed me. I went to about um, two, two other incidents. Um, believe it or not, one day I could run, that's why I'm stiff today, because I, I played rugby. I, and, um, and one day I was um, playing in uh, at Durham, we were playing, we were playing Leeds. I, and uh, one thing I could, or two things I could do at rugby. I could run fast because fear made you run fast. <laughs> and, and secondly, I was taught how to tackle when I was at school, so I could tackle anybody, I thought. So there I was, and suddenly this great big huge Leeds man was coming straight for me. He got the ball tucked on his arm, you know, like a big rugby forward. And I thought, oh, I know, I can, I can tackle anything. And, uh, and then the next thing I knew, they were saying to me, looking down on me and saying, it wasn't your fault he scored, Don, it wasn't your fault. And uh, I'd got concussion, it'd not be clean. And I was absolutely confident that I could tackle anything. And, and uh, it taught me a great big lesson that I couldn't. And that, and that in that situation, I was absolutely helpless. That's two. The third one was another rugby time when I was playing here in Doncaster, up at the rugby club. And, uh, and I, I bent down to pick the ball up and thumped, somebody thumped me and I hit my head on the ground. And the next thing I knew, I was in the changing room. And they said, who are we playing? I said, Sheffield. Right, you're OK, get back on. And so I went back on. And the next thing I knew, I was back in the changing room. And the match had finished. And I came to and looked around. And I said, what happened? Oh, they said, when you went back on, you started playing for Sheffield. <laughs> right. So I was absolutely sincere, but I was sincerely wrong. And so they took me off. And, uh, and nowadays, you wouldn't be allowed to play like that when you've had one cross, but never mind. Uh, that's three things. And the fourth thing was down here at the junction. When we bought the junction, the, old, the old public house, uh, it was shuttered up in absolute darkness. Dan was with me and someone else, I think. And we went in for the first time, quite excited that we got it. It was pretty dark, and eventually you had to see a bit. There was the old bar. And so I went behind the old bar, and suddenly... I was in space. My, my foot went, and I don't even have that feeling, but there was nothing there. The hatch was open to the cellar. I, and uh, I kind of went, but there's some steps, and I landed on the steps and got jammed in the 
and this little square bit at the top. And D Diana was Diana was here, was there, and I think if she hadn't been there, the other fella, I'd, I'd be there forever. Because I was absolutely helpless. I mean, I couldn't do a thing, not a thing, to, to help myself. Now, those four situations I've just talked about, you, you may have been in, thinking in your mind uh, of, of various times when you, you're absolutely sincere what you were doing and found that you were sincerely wrong, or you're absolutely certain you could deal with the situation, and suddenly, wham, and you found you were helpless, and all the experience you'd got was no good, and so on. And so at some point, I guess, in your life, certainly, when you became a Christian, you'd realise that you're helpless. You could not achieve God's standard. You could not make yourself good. You, and you, you, as Christians, you may find that now, that you cannot... Uh, there's a temptation and so on, and you find it hard to resist, and we fall. And uh, Paul, here in this, in this passage we, we've got this morning, which David, I hope we're going to put that uh, thing up again, what we started the service with, David. Uh, the, the passage said, you were dead in your sins. When you were dead in your sins. And it's a simple message this morning, really, which, uh, which I want to bring. And it's not a long one, I hope. It's, it's just a simple, a simple message from this passage, which at first sight seems a little complicated. But let's look at it. Paul says, we're spiritually, spiritually dead. We may think we can help ourselves. We may think we can do this and do that. We may think, and there's a great danger as Christian people, that we still, we still think that we can earn a bit of our salvation, that we can, uh, by, by what we're doing, and God certainly would be pleased with me, and so on. But this passage tells us, come on, all of us, all of us, it says, are helpless, spiritually dead. And, uh, and we may, this morning, say, well, not, not me, uh, but once we were, and maybe you've not yet found this relationship with God, and you feel like Luther did, that it was almost in, impossible to do. The passage tells us, last week we heard about, uh, about beware of false teaching. And the, the, most commentators think that the teaching of the church was the, the, the Jewish faith, the Ju Judaism, saying it still works. That if you do this and do that, you become a Christian. Or if you are a Christian and got faith, then you do need to be circumcised, go through the process of uh, what the Jews did to become, uh, you know, when they were young babies, circumcised, uh, and to become part of the Jewish faith. Uh, and uh, the, there were those Christians who were saying that, well, you need this. Oh, I believe, but you need to go through the root and the rituals of, of which uh, the Jewish faith was. Uh, and uh, we heard last week, be careful, deceptive, philosophies are around and teachings. And that is what was happening here. And it said, no, 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 no. Uh, and uh, uh, that's what you once were, and you've no need for this, no need for this, because God has done something. I want us to just remind ourselves of Martin Luther, which I showed before. He was a man who desperately wanted to know God. And he saw God as being holy and righteous. And he felt that he could not achieve that standard that God wanted from him. And so he became a monk. And he said, in his own words, if anyone could have reached heaven by their monkery, it would be me. Because he prayed more than he should do. He fasted. He beat his body. He, 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 he did all the good things. And one thing which I want to, to show you now on a, on a clip from a video from a film of Martin Luther, when he was sent to visit Rome, let us think about ourselves. We may put something which we are trusted before the Lord Jesus, and uh, even as believers we can do that, and, and trust in what, who we are and what we do, and, and so on, and our abilities and strengths and so on. When really, that reminds us that, uh, well, David, Luther, Luther struggled when he got back, and, and eventually, eventually, he, he, he found in the scripture passages like this. He gave us all our sins, 
having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness. All this stuff which Luther's on about there, all this stuff which we try to do, and uh, we try, we try to please God and to come to his standards uh, and to love him and know him as we ought to do, we, that's our debt, we've got to do that. It's a, all our legal indebtedness which stood against us and it condemned us because he couldn't reach that standard. And we can't. Then it says, he has taken it away. Wow, Luther realised that. God has taken that away. And he's nailed it to the cross. What he's saying is, is that God is righteous. And that's what Luther couldn't get out of his mind. He's righteous. How can I be righteous? And if he's righteous, he'll condemn me. Because I'm sinful. I'm dead in sin. But then it dawned on him that the righteousness of God was that he was still righteous, but he had taken upon himself the sin of the world. He'd taken upon himself Martin Luther's unrighteousness. He became sin for us on the cross. He who knew no sin became our sin bearer. And it was on and our debt, which we could never afford, we sang in our first, second song, the debt which we could never afford, he took it and was nailed to the cross. And therefore our salvation is everything. There's a Christian, as Paul writes here, a Christian circumcision. As it were, we enter through faith. We enter through a spiritual baptism, when we, through the waters of baptism. It is a sign that has been washed away our sin, and it's gone. Uh, and uh, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. He forgave us all our sins. He's cancelled the charge. He's nailed it to the cross. And what's more, it says, he's disarmed the powers and authorities. Those who nailed Jesus to the cross, the Roman authority, the, Jew, the, the Jewish authorities thought they were clever and, and poor contempt upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the cross, the tables were turned. They were the ones who were contemptible. They were the ones who failed. They were the ones who made a public exhibition of themselves. Because on the cross, Jesus took away sin, he bore our sin, and he sounded all the powers of, the, of this world uh, and, uh, and trample them over and they are trampled down by the cross. So it's a simple message from a seemingly complicated passage. We don't need any deeds, we don't need anything, all we need is to be in a, realize our helplessness before God and to trust in what Christ has done for us. That is the simple message of this passage, which was to the Corinthians, the, uh, Colossians. Those who are not Christians, and those who are. All we need, says Jesus, is the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, said Luther. All we need is the Lord Jesus Christ. And who's done all this for us? It is God. He has done it all. And that passage talks about, he did this. He made us. And it is what God has done for us in Christ.